Hi, thanks very much for joining me again. Today what we're looking at is another of our wood turners round box hinges. Um, we have another model here that I'm going to show you now. Um, I know I've done these before, I'm going to do the video again, but I, several people have asked me if I would show them how the gluing in is done. So I'm going to show that as well. Um, I'm not going to stipulate which glue you have to use, but we'll come to that later. Um, and, and a little nifty trick that maybe I haven't shown on previous videos, and that's just putting a little groove in the wooden parts themselves as a run out for the glue, um, which might help because they're not built into the hinge. So here is the hinge, it's one of ours because it says Procraft on it, you'll see there's a little lip there, this one is in antique bronze, um, it has the stay here so it opens to 90 degrees only, um, it's a really really solid robust hinge and you'll see a little dot there and a little dot on the other side and those are little magnets. Um, now it's not a really strong magnetic pull, it's just a gentle pull of a magnet to keep the two parts together uh, and inside you'll see we have Celtic knot design in the lid section and the base section. I absolutely love these little hinges, they're fabulous. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do one today, um, as I said, with a little tip for gluing them in and we'll do the gluing in a little bit later if I can concentrate on the gluing and operating the camera at the same time. Um, but we're going to start off first of all with just cutting the relevant parts um, to put on the lathe and basically use the hinge itself to measure, same as the other ones that we've done before. So you may have lots of different ways of doing this yourself. I'm going to start with a bit of, it's actually oak stave this, and I've drilled out a 38mm um, recess, rebase, whatever you like to call it, in there and I'm going to mount this on my chuck. Now, to start with a little tip, you'll see the side that I've drilled here looks like it's going to be the inside, but it's not. So when you start this side, for mounting this side is actually going to be the top uh, of the of the um, the box and that's so, yeah that's going to be the top this is going to be the inside part if that makes sense to you it seems a little bit odd when you drill it out thinking oh this is going to be the inside and this is going to be the top no it doesn't work that way um, because we're going to mount that on there and then we're going to cut it round and then we're going to use the hinge to measure the fitting on this side of the block of wood. Hopefully that makes sense. In order to make sure I get it the right way up, because this is going to be the base and I'm going to do a different top, I'm going to have the hinge opened out and I'm going to use the hinge like that. And we're now going to cut um, the section here on the outside to mount that hinge on there. You can put markings on the wood if you want to, um, it's entirely up to you. And obviously whatever tool you like, I'm using a skew because what I need to get is a nice angular fit for the hinge. That's quite a nice fit. It's just a fraction too deep. You won't be able to see from there, but it is. But anyway, now that's in there, I'm going to use a pencil and just mark the inside line there. Organised as always, the pencil is the other side of the workshop. So now we can see the inside of where we need to cut to. And we need to remember this is the inside of the box, so we need to get the inside walls quite flat because soon we're going to have to turn it round and um, remount it to the other side.
we'll have a look at that and see how we're getting on. How's that? Not bad. I can see a tiny little lip of wood around the edge there. Um, I'll try and zoom in. I'm not sure if uh, I can see a tiny little lip of wood around the edge. So we need just a tiny little bit more taken off there. And it is a tiny bit. pretty good to me. Okay so now what we're going to have to do is just look at um, taking a little, I've made this just fractionally too deep that way so I'm going to take a little bit off the face until we get nice and flush with this part of the wood here. So having got the inside lip right I'm now going to hollow out um, the inside so keeping this part here flat because it makes it much easier to mount when we turn it round the other way. Now you'll notice because it's a stop hinge it's got a little bit um, on the back of the hinge there which impedes fitting um, on there. It means it doesn't sit quite flat. I'm not sure if I can get that with a camera angle to actually show you but this stop part of the hinge here is just stopping that sitting flush. The bottom and the top are very very slightly different in size but the top will fit. It's slightly tighter on there and that will give you an idea of the fit that you're going to achieve on the bottom without that um, stop part. So hopefully that's, um, that's making sense. Right, now I said earlier I was going to give you a little tip and the little tip I'm going to give you is just using a skew I'm going to put a little line right in the middle of this section here and that's going to hopefully provide a little run out for any glue. That's all it is, um, you won't see it on the inside and you won't see it on the outside hopefully. So we've hollowed out the inside now as you can see, now you need to give some thought to possibly putting some finish in there. Make sure if you're putting finish in here um, that you don't put the finish on the lip here because we're going to have to glue this later. So put it on the inside by all means, don't put it on here. And the next step we're going to look at is the little lip um, for the hinge here. You don't have to put a lip on, if you want to put that all level you will just get a slight step between the edge of the hinge and the piece of wood but we'll try and avoid that by just putting another tiny little step in there. That's much better. So now you can hopefully see that the hinge and the wood are running level with each other and now we can look at starting to shape the base and it doesn't have to be the same diameter all the way down I might just leave it splayed out just slightly like this but just coming down to this measurement here so right that's as close as I can get with this camera without it going out of focus so hopefully you can see we've got the inside we've got a little lip here with a rebate cut out for the glue runoff and a little step and then this part here. Done a little bit of shaping on the back section here, it's actually still not quite round there but never mind um, and we're just going to recheck that we're still in the right place for the hinge to go and that looks pretty good to me there. So we're now going to turn this part round and finish off 
what I called earlier was the top. This is actually the bottom section I'm doing first. So it's the outside of the bottom section. Very confusing to explain. Tops and bottoms of two parts. Right, let's turn it round. So we've turned the section round. We're now just going to um, take off this part. This is the base of um, the box. Um, if we're left with a little nick there, it doesn't matter greatly. But what I'm going to do, just take this down slightly, smooth that off. In actual fact, you can leave this section in if you want to. Um, and I'm just going to put a, just a gentle curve on the bottom because things, when they're sat, um, just look a bit better with it, just a little curve on the bottom instead of a sharp angle like that. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just using a little sanding sealer and I'm just going to put some hard wax on it. Making sure, as I said before, you don't get hard wax on the top lip there. Whilst it's mounted here, it would be really difficult to get in there anyway. I've put a little bit of sanding sealer on the inside and on that lip. That won't stop glue sticking to the wood um, and sticking to the hinge. Right, a bit of hard wax when that's dry. So. Here's the bit that we've just done, um, just finished in sanding sealer and a bit of hard wax. Um, here's our hinge and hopefully we'll see that that fits on there quite nicely. Fits quite nicely on the inside and we haven't got a ridge between the hinge and the wooden part there. And now what we're going to do is the top. Round two with another bit of whiskey stave and I have to tell you it smells absolutely wonderful. So, a bit of sanding sealer, um, and that doesn't matter the sanding sealer on the joint part and then a bit of hard wax on the top. You can please yourself with what you finish it with, of course. Um, and then we'll look at gluing the two parts together. Right, the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. No, I'm not going to eat it, but let's take it off and see how it fits on the other half that we made earlier, which is here. And hopefully that fits on there, and you can see there really isn't a lip. If I hold that a bit closer, there isn't a lip between the hinge and the wooden part. And we're now going to look at gluing that together. So, on to the gluing. Now, the first thing to say is normally I would leave the parts for 24 hours just in case they decide they're going to move because what you don't want to do is wood movement, have wood movement when you've stuck your wood into the hinge because wood, despite you might think, is exceptionally strong once it starts to move. You probably won't bend a hinge this thick, but some of the thinner, smaller hinges that... Uh, that we do, they might do, you don't know. So as I said, I would leave that for at least 24 hours normally. The glue I'm going to use today, he says hopefully, is um, actually Gorilla Glue. And the reason I'm using Gorilla Glue is because it's the only two-part epoxy I've got. And as you'll see, there's hardly any left in there. It's been in the cupboard for probably two years. I don't even know if I'm gonna, I don't even know if it's gonna work. Um, I've got myself a bit of scrap, I've got my parts laid out, um, I'm just going to hopefully squeeze the two parts, and we're not going to use very much, out onto there, put the lid back on, and I've got a little stick, I'm just going to mix those two together until they're well mixed. As I say, you don't need very much, my preference is for two part epoxy, you may prefer to use something different. Personally for these, I don't like to use um, CA glue because CA glue sticks very quickly. It is clear, um, but it doesn't always match the finish you've put on. If you get any on the outside, it sticks to everything and it's extraordinarily brittle. Um, and with this, if you get a little bit more than you need to somewhere, um, it's quite easy to remove it. And I'm just gonna put a little bit, I think I've got a lump, I've got a lump in me, lump in me glue, right, a little bit, just over the top, and I've put that little rebate in there, like so, 
I'm guessing you could use contact adhesive if you wanted to. Um, it's really up to your personal preference. This is just mine. As I say, there's not an awful lot. Um, you don't need to put an awful lot on there. And it, wipe, it wipes off relatively easily. And now, having done that, I'm ready just to pop the hinge onto the top like so. And if you've got any glue seeping out, it's normally quite easy. Just to, I'm just going to use my finger just to rub around and remove any excess off there. That's that bit done. Make sure you haven't got bits sticky on your fingers when you go to pick up the next bit. Right, so clean fingers, tiny little bit of epoxy and I'm just rubbing it over the top just over the top of there. Chances are you will get a tiny amount that comes in around the sides, but it's not difficult to get rid of. I think that's enough, and we'll then pop that in there like so. And obviously make sure you've got the orientation of the top the way you want it. And after five minutes, hopefully, that will be glued. Let's come back in five minutes. So we're all done. I'm just going to have a, a little chat to you about the wood that I um, use. Um, lots of people cut the boxes out of this type of section, a bit like a, a bowl blank, if you like. I do mine what I call cross grain. Um, which means I can I'm actually cut in it's like out of a plank if that makes sense to you um, because this wood it's quite easy to layer if you want it deep um, and it, it's a bit more hard to cut on the lathe uh, but you do get to see the grain pattern across the top of the lid it's just my preference for doing it that way you can do it either way but obviously with something like that that actually wouldn't be big enough for the 60 mil hinges so you need quite a large piece of wood if you're going to turn it um, on the end grain as opposed to cross grain um, and I'll show you the finished little box now here it is so you can see the cross grain on the top it's just my preference as I say I just quite like to see the grain pattern across the top and the end grain around the side like that um, and you can see the medullary rays in this oak there they just look a bit different than they normally do um, on some of the pieces of wood so anyway there we go that's the finished little box so hopefully hold that up there and you can see there really isn't a gap there's no step between um, the hinge and the lid there or the hinge and the base and that opens up like so and that is the inside and as I say it doesn't take a lot of glue and if you if it does squeeze out it's quite easy to just wipe it away without any problem at all and you can just feel just the very lightest it's not a strong ma magnetic close just very very gentle you can probably just hear that clicking shut so there we go i hope that's been helpful um, with all the little tips and tricks uh, and the gluing part for one of these boxes thanks very much for watching we'll see you next time happy and safe turning bye bye for now